This device could be the future of many of the engineered parts around you. Although it sounds like Darth Vader, this structure is based on an origami design and is made of carbon fiber composites that act like artificial muscles, capable of moving mechanical parts and surviving extreme conditions. I'm Dr. Ben Miles, here we help scientists, engineers and innovators change the world by showing how ideas can be turned into action and arming people with the skills to follow this pathway. This week I got the chance to talk to a startup company taking principles of origami structures and applying them to refined components that haven't changed in over 200 years to build the next generation of engineered devices. I am Dr. Simon Bates and I'm the CEO at Actuation Lab. We are rethinking industrial hardware. So we're looking at bits of clunky, greasy hardware that hasn't changed pretty much since the Industrial Revolution, we're using modern materials and techniques to make it work better, be more efficient, um, and sort of change industries for the better. That's the sort of the big overview, the big dream. I got the opportunity to visit Simon and his team at the National Composites Centre. Actuation Labs are building devices inspired by academic research at the University of Bristol into uses for origami structures in engineering. Now, origami has already inspired folding solar panels, bulletproof shields, and other dynamic structures, but Simon and his co-founders have turned their attention onto how an origami structure could act like an artificial muscle. Michael was looking at artificial muscles and how you make efficient structures uh, do efficient things. He'd been working with some origami structures and said, okay, if I can turn this structure basically into a tube and we pressurize it, we can get a contraction. So it's quite counterintuitive. You put pressure inside something, you usually expect it to expand, but, but he'd come up with a structure, which we filed a patent on, that would contract. Here is an origami actuator, um, which sort of very complicated looking structure. You put pressure into this thing and it will contract, relieve the pressure, it will extend. And, uh, and that was sort of the basis of, of what we started. And, and this thing is this thing is 3D printed, but everything is sort of going towards the uh, going towards the more heavy duty composite material versions that are slightly more uh, industrial than. 3D printed versions. The need for better components arises as humanity expands into less and less hospitable environments, where the materials that have suited us well in the past start to fail. In some environments, component failure can mean danger for the teams or even major environmental damage. A composite material, for those of you that haven't heard that term before, is a material that is made of a combination of other materials. In Simon's case, he might be taking carbon fiber and a polymer resin or a plastic to make a component that is lighter and stronger than its metal counterpart. These materials are used across industries, built often by robotic arms that wrap and weave carbon fiber before baking it in massive ovens the size of small buildings. This approach has a number of advantages, mainly the lifetime and resilience of these devices, of these components, to fatigue is significantly longer than their metal counterparts. Actuation Lab is trying to use these composite components to build actuators to survive these harsh environments and to replace the metal components that would usually make up these sorts of devices. You've got you've got big pieces of metal sliding past each other, you've got wear components. It's fine, they, they, they work to an extent, quite inefficient, but you put that out in a salt water atmosphere. If you take oil and gas for an example, you have this actuator sits out in the sea and then the outside of this thing corrodes. The traditional uh, makeup of this thing is you have a, a massive spring in there, sort of, sort of saying these things are fail, um, fail safe, essentially air fails and then bang it'll close. But that spring is a huge amount of stored energy and if you've got, a, if you've got the outer that has rusted then you've got this perfect projectile that if the spring is compressed and the end runs rusts off and that will get fired across your platform. So and that's happened on a number of occasions we're like, okay, this is a big safety issue here. I mean, so much so that there's a company that's, that is making bulletproof bags to fit, custom bags to fit over the top of actuators. And they're really expensive to replace. So the other, the other side of it is the operational thing, is if these things are degrading, they're in often hard to reach places. So there becomes an operational sort of problem there. And it's the same thing with the HVAC dampers. They're the sort of most highly serviced thing if you go out onto an offshore platform, um, because these things have to open and close. Um, because they might be stopping uh, a fire from breaking out and or, or at least getting any bigger. And if you've got a poor air supply system into them that is slightly wet, 
the inside will corrode, the moisture never gets out, these things slowly degrade, and then they lock up and you've got to put a new one on. So they're being checked all the time. So if we can create an actuator which has less moving parts, won't corrode, um, and, and will just continually work for much longer than the current actuators, which is what we're working towards, then operationally we can help them out. Um, we can stop unplanned downtime, which can you know, ruin the operation, and, um, and, yeah, and, and stop these safety events. In the way that I showed you the, uh, the actuator on its own, that's got one of these in here. And so, so this is a valve actuator mock-up, um, 3D, printed, 3D printed job. So when we pressurise the actuator, we should get an opening of the valve and then we release the pressure, it springs back closed. And, uh, and this is one of our desktop demos of this. So running at low pressure, but we're, what we're currently doing and, um, is, is to increasing the pressure that these things run at so we can replace this uh, plastic version with something that is composite materials. When you look at the Actuation Lab devices, you start to notice a couple of things. First, that it's made from a single part, which is fantastic for simplifying mechanical devices. But second, it's also made from a repeating structure of triangular shapes, which wrap across the surface. These repeating structures and how they are arranged is what give the device its resilience and its ability to contract when under pressure. I asked Simon how they go about testing the failure rates of these devices, and he explained that the first step in the process is to test individually a whole range of different material combinations in representative test pieces that they call coupons, before they then go on and test the entire actuator. It's in here, it'll be coupon. Maybe one of those. One of those, and the idea is that we're yeah, cycling these things to uh, try and fatigue them to, uh, to see what the life of these could be. These, these are a mini component of the larger actuator, essentially, so we're speeding up the tests by running them on this machine rather than running them as an entire actuator. I mean, what would that have, in theory, if, <laughs> if, it, was, if it was a use case, what would the use case so, have been? So the idea, and there's a, there's, there's a pipe dream still to take these sort of actuators, higher pressures, but if you wanted to, I mean, you see these sort of drag reduction systems on the back of, um, on the back of Formula One cars and things like this. Um, it was a nice use case to go look at some carbon fiber and, and here's a nice wing. But in the future, if we can improve the uh, performance of composite materials and the structure that it's in, then potentially we could take these to small, compact, single part actuators for, for trimming foils on, um, aer in aerospace or in automotive. It's taken 200 years for us to start re-engineering these components using modern materials to redesign industries for the better by taking inspiration from an art form that's been around for over a thousand years. <laughs>